You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Today, I have David Eady on the line, and he is a certified executor advisor who has worked in the financial planning industry in Montreal, so we in Canada today, um, for more than 35 years. He is the author of The Executor Help, um, How to Settle an Estate. He also hosts the podcast of the same name. So, hey, David, how are you today? Hey, Tiffany, thanks for having me. Today, you've gone international. We're here in Canada. Yes, yes, I love international. I love my Canadians. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. How many Canadians do you have? How many, how many are we? We're up to two now, two on the podcast so far. Okay. But you all. That's not a good number to start with, but we're a big country, but okay. You know what? Start with two. We'll go further. Right, go right. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. All right. So let's just jump right into it because I love the topic that you're bringing to the table right now, because a lot of people don't even think about this at all. Um, I meet a lot of people that don't have wills, don't have any of that stuff set up, but this is taking it a step further and talking to the executors. So um, <clears throat> just to get us started here, I, I know that you talk about the triangle of conflict, right? And so I just want to just know what is the triangle of conflict before we get into how we can avoid it? Well, um, the triangle of conflict, if you, if you as an executor find yourself involved with a triangle of conflict, you've, you're, in, you're, you're in an area of hot mess because triangle, hot, it, triangle hot of conflict is hot mess. It means if you're an executor or if you haven't put together uh, an estate and you've got one of these issues, you've got a problem. So that means the estate either has no will, there's a second marriage, or the kids and the family don't get along. So if you've got one of those elements in, in part of the, uh, the estate, it's a hot mess. You've got to, you're going to have a problem. And it's just going to make the, the, uh, the job of settling the estate even harder. So I, I know when you're talking about a lot of people think that, well, you know, um, with wills, in the, just in the, you know, the American and, and Canadian, we've got a high uh, percentage of people who don't have wills. And in the, the black community and even in, in the Hispanic, it's been seen that there's maybe one third of the community actually has a will. And um, it's important to have one because you're not leaving a mess for your family. You're, not, you're getting yourself organized in case of a, of a death or a disability or something like that. You need to be organized to, uh, and, and the only way you can do that is if you have an estate. Wow, absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned those three things because I have seen all three of those things play out before and it is not fun at all. Um, just to give you a quick story, I know the third one um, uh, where you said if there are um, any conflicts between the kids, um, that's a huge one because a lot of times um, and actually in my family, uh, my one of my great, great great grandfathers, he actually sold all his land so his kids don't fight over it um, because he saw that that was going to be an issue. He had like 10 kids. <laughs> so he was like, you know what, I'm going to just sell it before I die and call it a day, um, which now hindsight 2020, of course, looking back, I'm like, darn, I wish we would have kept it because it was like a hundred and some acres um, and, you know, it could have been passed down. But I know the other side of that where the kids are fighting amongst themselves. And, um, you know, it's it becomes very, very ugly, very, very fast because then it becomes, you know, whoever was chosen as the executor, it's like, it's all their fault why I'm not in it in the will or it's all their fault why, you know, this isn't going right or whatever. And so it just becomes a huge, a huge deal. <laughs> I'm sure you, you've heard of a lot of those stories as well. Well, that's absolutely, that's how I ended up uh, writing the book. In my case, it was seven years, 10 court appearances and $50,000 in lawyer's fees to sell my parents' estate. And they had a will. So, yeah, I know. So, and, and every time I would talk about what I went through um, and how disappointed uh, having a problem with a particular sibling, not naming any names, but anyway, this particular sibling, 
we uh, I'd hear about one more story, one more executor was telling me kind of like what you're, you're talking about. So I didn't want anybody else to have to go through what I did. So I, this is the reason why I wrote the book. Um, and, and it's, and it's great what your great grandfather did. And there's a couple of things he could have done that you all could have benefited um, from the estate right now. Um, there's three types of families. If we, and there's, there's uh, what I call the avoider. And the avoider is the family who's either going to be reluctant, they're going to procrastinate, they're going to be apathetic about having um, doing anything. And, and, <clears throat> and when they, they don't do anything, they're leaving their family in chaos. They're leaving them disorganized, okay? Um, and if we use an example of who was an avoider, um, point out uh, the actor uh, Chadwick Boswick, who was Black Panther. He died mm -hmm. without a will. So, okay, so, you know, he, he passed away far too early and he left his family in a situation where his wife had to go petition to become executor. Another case is uh, Prince, huge, uh, everybody loved Prince. And, you know, he was married, uh, married twice and divorced, but the size of his state left without a will. Okay, so those are the avoiders. And it sounds like your, your, your grandfather was like an acceptor which what I call an acceptor. And that's someone who's, who's got an idea of what they want to do and they haven't done just enough to make sure that everything goes well. So what he should have done was he was worried about the, you know, the, the 10 kids fighting, but what he should have done is had the will. He should have said, this is what I'm, uh, this is what I want. And these are, these are my wishes. This is who I chose to um, have as my executor. And this is the way it is. These are my wishes. End of story. Um, I don't know if you saw the, an example of someone who was uh, an acceptor. They thought about it, but they didn't do all the extra steps. Is um, Have you seen the movie um, uh, Aretha, Aretha Franklin with no, Jennifer Hudson? Mm -mm. Okay, so Aretha Franklin, she did a little bit and thought about what she wanted to do, but she did four handwritten wills, okay? And now... Her estate is in is in flux. Her children are now fighting. We're back to one of the areas of the triangle of conflict and trying to do it yourself and not doing everything. Make sure that everything's organized. Again, leads to chaos and disorganization. Yeah, the and family. see <clears throat> the second story I was telling you about. Um, actually, what happened was the will was left, but one of the children was written off the will. Um, and so then they think, oh, well, the sibling that's the executor is the one that influenced the person um, <laughs> to write me off the will and things like that. And so then that caused another whole conflict, even though, you know, they thought that they did every the person that passed thought they did everything right um, in their eyes. But now it's causing a whole different issue because now they think that the executor has all this high power and they can change things. So um, <laughs> it's very very interesting. The, the, exec, the executor can't change the will. The exec, executor is there to administer the wishes of the testator, the person who um, whose will it is, whose estate it is. What they should have done is taken it one step further and not only have the conversation with the executor of this is what my wishes are, not wait till the will is open, but they also mm -hmm. should let the beneficiaries know, the family, all the ones that are um, who are entitled. Not, not the, not the, not the, the, the sister-in-law or the wife or the cousin who have no business whatsoever sticking their nose in it, getting involved, giving their two cents. And that, that happened in my family, uh, my own business, who the executor has to talk to is the, the beneficiaries and who, who's named in there. So the person who wrote the will should have said, okay, beneficiaries, this is what I, I'm going to be leaving, uh, leaving to you and the story. And if they get mad, so be it who's left off the will it's not it's not for you to question someone's uh mind or thoughts um of what they were thinking or what they intended to for a, for an estate now granted if there's some proof that the executor did some undue uh, influence on the testator at the time then maybe there's 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 some validity maybe you, you may you are going to take them to court but a lot of times it's people are upset because they feel entitled to an estate. They feel that they're entitled for some reason, 
and they think this is their their one lottery ticket winnings and whatever has happened in their life financially will get fixed from this estate and this is what's owed to them they're not owed anything you can do whatever you want with the estate so um that's the reason why siblings are always there's always family members and you like i said before you always got cousins and other people don't mind their own business got nothing to do with them sticking in but well he should have done it. your name's on the will unless your name's on the will you're a beneficiary i don't want to hear you <laughs> shoot <laughs> Yes, yeah, you're just noise. Stop. stop. Right, right. So, yeah. So, okay. So we talked about the triangle of conflict. We talked about a couple of ways to avoid it. What other tips do you have to avoid these triangles of conflict? Well, if there's two things. And so the book is written for someone who is an executor and for them to understand what it means to be an executor mm-hmm. and or they know that they're going to be executor, but they haven't um had the conversation with the individual who 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 they've been asked to be the executive for and then the book is also written for someone who is setting up their estate and they want to make sure that their executor knows exactly what needs to be done they they're going to put the important papers and and have everything organized so that if something was to happen this is what it's in a bright red envelope it's in a filing cabinet, don't lock it in a safe because who's going to know what how to open up the, the safe if mm-hmm. the will's inside there. So you want to say, you know what, it's in a bright orange envelope or a bright red envelope and you'll find the important information. Now, in the, in, if you're doing it for your estate, in that bright uh, envelope, you also want to make sure you have all the important papers, but you also want to have all your digital assets, which would mean like all your passwords because even though you pass away your social media all those logins are all there mm. and uh, i had a friend of mine telling me the other day that he a friend of his passed away but he's still getting on his facebook this friend is still giving recommendations even though he's even guy he's dead so mm. you also want to make sure that you're organized that you leave the right information for the individual oh that is a very good tip and i did not those two t- actually i took two tips out of that for myself um one was don't lock it in a safe because that's exactly where mine is right now so i need to go ahead and take it out and then two i didn't even think about the passwords thing so people can have access to do the things that they need to do um you know whether it's notifying my audience like hey tiffany has passed away or whatever the case may be um you know i never i never thought about that so that is a gem right there in itself just think about all the passwords that you have okay that's your audience um but you know your your netflix your your all your all your social media logins your amazon think of all the passwords your emails how do you get who who knows who knows uh who those what those passwords are who knows who only you. So have you written them down? And then if was something was to happen, how somebody can access it? So you need to have that all written out. And again, and it's in that bright folder so that um, people can access it. The, the, the person that's responsible can access it easily. Make it make the light, make make the job easier on them. And now if you need to be an executor, you understand what you need to do make sure that you have all the information that you have everything organized because on average to settle in the state it's about 100 hours that you have or it could take anywhere from 12 to 18 months and with covid it could be even longer so you need to you'd want to as an executor have all the information and try and make it as easy as possible but you also if you're setting up your estate you want to make it easier on the executor So the, again, it comes back to having that conversation. Mm, And I'm glad you, you're switching it to what the executor should know, because that was my next question. So if we have people that are listening and they know that they're going to be an executor or they are in the process of being an an executor, um, or even family members that have no clue what an executor is, because that was the case in my situation, um, what should every executor know about the role and the responsibility that they now have? It's a thankless job. It's a thankless job, and you're going to get into, you're going to have arguments because you're going to have to deal with beneficiaries who are, you're going to see, I write in the book that you're going to see human uh, relationships at a level that you never thought. You Don't be shocked by how people are going to behave when there's an estate. So it's a thankless job. 
but you only have three goals. You want to make sure that you pay the right amount of taxes. You want to make sure that you distribute what has to get to the beneficiaries and you want to close the estate. But you want to try and do that as fast, fast as possible, but you also want to do it in a orderly fashion. You don't want this to drag it out. But if, and again, if you throw in any element of the triangle of conflict, we got ourselves a problem. So um, you, you, it comes down to organization and having conversations, having the conversations now. And also in the book, I talk about if you know you're going to be an executor, but say you see your, 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 your mom and dad, or uh, let's use mom and dad, for example, and you can see that they're slowing down or they need to be, they need help a little bit of organization and you need to make sure that their 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 files are in order that everything is in order again because if you if you don't have the conversation with them and i know it's uncomfortable um it it, it just opens up to having a mess later on it's going to leave things things that are going to be left unsaid in my case our family was like an acceptor yes we had my parents had a a, a will but my parents didn't have the conversation uh with they had a conversation with two of us but they didn't have a conversation with the third person and they may remain nameless but they the uh didn't have the conversation with them and then that's where we get to the in my case i had the mm -hmm. triangle of conflict mm -hmm. and i think it's so common but i feel like it's common because we don't have this book like <laughs> i think people need need to read this book so that way they know what all this this duty entails and also the people that aren't going to be the executor so they know what the executor has to go through because see in the situations that i know of <clears throat> I was like, you know, the executor has to go through a lot <laughs> like they're, they're doing a lot right now. And really, they have no control over, you know, what's been done or what's been said or whatever. They have no control, but they have a lot to handle. And so I think just the um, knowledge, like just getting more people to understand what an executor is and how it plays a role in settling in a state is is detrimental <laughs> to make sure that these situations don't happen, you know, to the best of our ability anyway, because, you know, there's always going to be something. Uh, weddings and funerals, it's always something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and I think the, the reason why um, a lot of people are either reluctant or they procrastinate is because they say, well, you know what, I don't have enough assets. But that's only for rich people. As long as if you've got any sort of uh, a home, a car, a money, doesn't, it doesn't matter the amount, you have an estate. And, and take it one step further, if you've got children, if you die in test state, um, you, you're now leaving the state um, in charge of what happens to your kids. You might say, well, you know, automatically everything's going to go to them. It's not. There's laws in place for that. I might be here in Canada, but it's the same thing in the US. So my, my book works for US and Canada in terms of the, the framework of what you need to be um, aware of and what you need to do. Because each state is different, but you still have to go through probate and all those things. But the, the, the scenarios that I use in the book work in Canada and the US and what you need to be aware of. So like I said, you know, find uh, to do the will, find a lawyer, they charge by the hour, um, it, you, I don't think anybody, then anybody's not going to have a, I have to pay a huge amount to a lawyer unless you, you know, have, um, a very complex estate and your Oprah or Beyonce or something like that. So it's not going to be expensive. Okay. So you're going to go in, you're going to say, you're going to have the meeting and it's, it's going to, it's going to be, should be relatively cheap to organize, uh, to have your estate set up because what you want to do is leave a legacy and not leave a mess because it's probably the best gift that you're gonna to give to, to your family to leave uh, things organized. Especially if you have kids, that's another whole thing altogether because now you're leaving your kids in, in, in limbo, what happens to them? It, it isn't automatic that, hey, it's gonna to go to, um, you know, they're gonna to go to somebody. I, I talk about in my book, uh, a friend of mine, his, 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 fa his father passed away without a will and, in the church um, parking lot, him and his sister were divided up. One, he went with his aunt and the other, his sister went with another other aunt because there was no, uh, and then on top of that, 
anytime they needed money, the ants needed money to, to look after him, he, uh, they had to go petition to go to court to get, you know, cash money for him to, you know, for sports and school and all that sort of stuff like that. You can wipe away all of those problems and not have the, uh, the state or the government involved just by make sure that you oh, have man, a will. And I didn't even realize that. Like, oh gosh, that seems like, uh, oh, that seems horrible. Because I have two kids myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, I would hate for, uh, if they needed something, you know, they have to go through the whole court process, which we know how that is, um, <laughs> to get money just for them to survive. I wouldn't want that for my kids. And so um, I definitely, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's so important, um, especially with people that have kids. And then also I wanted to bring up, what about businesses? Um, are businesses typically included in the state plan or how does that work? Yep, it's in the succession. Again, <laughs> what a book I have. There's a chapter on there's a chapter on that as well in, in, in succession plan. You as a business owner, as a business owner, yes, you're going to have your estate plan, but you also have a succession plan because if something was to happen to you, either you're going to want someone in the family to still run the business, you're either going to sell it or you're going to shut it down. So those options, you have to say what you want happen in your succession plan. Um, without a will and you've got a business. What happens to all of your, your customers, people who have paid you? Um, I talk about uh, the head of Zappos, um, Tony Shea. He died. Um, he was worth $840 million and um, he didn't have a will. And uh, so they, the court appointed his brother and his father as executors. They went in his house and he had, I think there was over two or 300 sticky notes on the on the post notes on the wall with all these business deals but now the estate's being sued because he had a lot of contracts he had a lot of things going on um again there was no there's the element of a uh, conflict uh, triangle of conflict number one no will what can possibly everything. go wrong so now <laughs> we've got everything exactly so now you've got to piece together what was his business dealings? What did he want done? Who does he owe to? Who is he paid? All those sort of things like that. So as a business owner, you need to figure out, okay, if something was to happen, what would I, uh, how would I want the business to be handled? Do I want it to be sold? Do I want it to, to carry on? Or is it just going to shut down? So that besides your estate plan, you also have, want to have some sort of succession plan. Plus on top of that, you need a folder for that because I'm sure you've got passwords and digital assets for the business alone, irregardless of what you've got personal, for your, um, right. your personal life. So you, you can get stuff for your business. And then if you're an executor and the individual has a business, you also want to talk about, um, be concerned, concerned about, okay, um, what do I do first? What do I do next? Have they left me that succession plan so they can follow along? Because if the person didn't have a, you're an executor and the person didn't have a succession plan and now you're going to have creditors saying, well, you know what, I've, um, uh, they owe X amount of dollars. Now you've got to deal with creditors mm -hmm. from the business. You, uh, you've got creditors from your personal life and then also creditors from the business. You've got um, clients who you've probably uh, paid the individual what happened to those dollars? So you need to have a clear understanding. Well, if, I, if I'm an executor of someone who has a business, I need to know where all the important information is and how is the business going to be um, uh, organized if something was to happen? Am I supposed to shut it down? Am I supposed to sell it? Again, that's going to come from a succession plan. Mm, and see, because <laughs> me and my husband, we have six different businesses and we have not thought about any of this for any of them. And so now we have homework because we need to make sure that that's a thing as well. You know, the there's will, a right? There's, there's a, a book, book for that. For that there, right? book. Absolutely. Book and see, that. the mm -hmm. thing is like, you know, we've got the will down packed, you know, our healthcare power of attorney, you know, all of the essential documents, except for this whole succession planning, um, because who's going to run these businesses if we pass like money talk with Tiff, for instance, if I pass away tomorrow, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know, um, who's going to get this episode out? <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, well, I'm hoping was... <laughs> that this episode will get out, but you, 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 you're you're a young woman, so uh, you know you you're you're healthy. I'm I'm assuming you're healthy. So this episode will go out, and you've got you and your husband got years and years 
of, uh, of, of togetherness. And then he's got to walk his kids down, right. the, down and see, the aisle. But see, so. these are things that we need to think about, though, you know, ahead of time, uh, because, you know, like you said, a lot. Exactly. Just, just in, in case. case, like you said, a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, I don't have enough or I'm too young to think about that. You know, who wants to think about dying? You know, that type of thing. I've heard that so many times myself. Spoiler alert. You could die at any time. Spoiler alert. <laughs> right. just so you know. So the, these conversations are important to have. I know another um thing that I've come across with my audience, I've heard people say, well, I don't know how to talk to my parents about this, or I don't know how to talk to my grandparents about this. Um, do you have any tips on how to get that conversation started? You could start by, and I think it's also, especially around, you've got to think around the, the maybe during the holiday season when people get together, you, 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 you might want to say, well, you know what, this is, uh, just to let you know, I, you know, I'm just going to want to get, make sure I've got everything organized for myself. I just had my will done and I, I feel so much better. Everything's organized. And then you might turn and say, you know, what, what have you been doing? How do you have you how, how have you got things organized? How have you got things set up? And that could open the gateway for for the conversation. Well, we haven't done it. And then you can find out. Well, what do you mean? Listen, intensive care is no place to find out that dad has no will. OK, so you um, you you, you want to open up that that uh, the, that conversation and say, well, this is what I'm doing and this is the reason why I did it. What have you done or or when you did, um, you know, your estate or your will, what, what did you do and then have it that way? Um, hopefully, you know, you've got siblings sitting at the table. Maybe they're not going to look at you sideways and say, what are you asking them about? <laughs> Again, that's where you want to have those conversations. We're asking about what they're doing. You know something? Wait, why, are you, why are you getting in their business? <laughs> no, no, exactly. You're plotting. So you want to have you, and if they do, you know, say something, it says, you know what? I would turn it on them. Well, what have you done? Well, it's not your business. Well, okay, well, that's fine. But I'm just letting you know this is what I did, and this is the why I the way I did it. I don't want if something was to happen, God forbid, I don't want to leave the family disorganized and traumatized and in a mess. And I just want to make sure that happens. It doesn't happen. So I'm. Uh, that's the reason why I'm asking mom and dad. And mm -hmm. that's it. Exactly. And that that's a perfect way to ease on into it. <laughs> Say, you know, I was starting to think about this for myself. And, you know, I just want to make sure. Well, not think about it. I right. just I just completed doing going through the process. And this is it. And then, oh, what have you done? Maybe there's something else I should add to it. And then you could learn what they've done. And I, so it's going to answer two questions. Have they done something? And then what have they done and what needs to be also updated? And then, you know, the next question is, well, you know, if something was to happen, where, where are all your, your important papers kept? Because when, when something happens, the family is going to be traumatized. And you can't be looking for a file and folder when, when you're traumatized. Grief. So you don't want me searching around. Where is this? Where is that? Um, in my book, I talk about a family who for weeks couldn't find um, the will. And then they come to find out there was no will. So uh, you, you want to make it as easy on yourself as the executor. And as someone who's setting up your estate, you want to make it as easier for the executor to, to uh you know, get the family exactly, through what they're going Exactly. Through. And I just want to add one more tip to this because it's this such a good conversation. Um, but one thing that I've seen happen is that um, uh, people didn't keep it updated. And so uh, there was a situation where there was a trust involved and the trust hadn't been updated with who was the uh, people over the trust since like the 80s. And so when the person died, it was like a sister or the, the sister of the wife, which they no longer got along. And then it was the cousin to the husband, which the wife hadn't talked to in forever. And so the wife is just like, OK, now what do I do? Because it's like two people, one I've never talked to. Well, I haven't talked to since we've put this together. And then the other person I had a falling out with, we don't even get along anymore. So, you know, she might try to do some sneaky stuff for me, you know, that type of thing. And so the documents weren't 
weren't updated periodically. And so it ended up being a whole mess um, that I had to help kind of navigate, help her navigate through. Um, but I just wanted to make that point too, because setting it one time is sometimes not enough. Like sometimes you need to revisit it, you know, when, whenever you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you say trust, it's funny that you say that. Um, when Kobe Bryant passed away, there was reports that he, he updated his will all the time, but um, and he had uh, the trust. But when he had passed away, he had uh, his young his his um, youngest child. She wasn't named in the trust. So so now they have to petition to go to get, because if something was to happen, she's left out of the trust. So you know, you're talking about your situation and, you, you know, we're talking about Kobe Bryant situation. It doesn't matter how big or how small the, the problems are all the same. And that's why you need to make sure that you have an estate plan, make sure that you um, have the conversations and you make sure that you update it every two, three years. Or if, if, um, if circumstances change, suppose there's a, a, a second wife or there's a, another you know, again, another child, exactly. But say if there's a second wife, where does that bring us? That brings us into the a potential problem with a triangle of conflict, second wife. So, you know, a, and another child or something. So anytime there's a, a change in the family circumstances or your, or your own circumstances, you need to update. Yes. And plan. also um, just one more point, because it's just stuff keeps coming. Enough. This is such a good conversation. Um, one more point. Naming your beneficiaries on your accounts is not enough. <laughs> That's one thing like, um, you know, people, they're just like, oh, I have my beneficiaries. Um, no, you still need a will. You still need, you know, all of those documents in place, too. So that way things still sm flow smoothly, right? Exactly. Well, you named your beneficiary. That's fine. But you still answer if uh, where's your pass passwords for your uh, Netflix and your uh, so all of those things it's all it's uh, naming the beneficiaries isn't enough you need to who's going to pay for the funeral uh for the funeral who who do you have in charge of that where are the dollars going to come from all of that sort of stuff has to stay uh in st in your estate plan and should be also named with absolutely with well thank you so much david this was a wonderful conversation and much needed especially for the community um so if people were interested in buying the book or finding out more about you where would they find you well you can go to davidedy.com um also we'll put uh, the link to my website and you can get it on amazon or uh barnes and noble anywhere fine books are sold and like my book and uh so the uh we'll put uh, davidedy.com in the show notes and you can come to my website um i've got a section on resources i've got a checklist for executors it's for us and canada and um if people have any questions they can always reach out to me on uh twitter and uh if i can help them out i'll do so and even on my website you can even get a sample chapter of the book and uh, get a little, a little uh, look see of what's uh, what's inside. But there's tons of great information. Yes, I, I mean, I, we can tell. We, you just dropped so many gems here, and this isn't even scratching the surface of the book. I can imagine. So I'm definitely interested in the book. I'm gonna get it. Um, I suggest that everyone listening gets it as well, even if you are not the executive, because this will help you understand that position a little better. And then also those people that are thinking about who they want as an executor, if you get the book, it'll kind of give you an idea of, okay, I don't know if this person will be right for this, <laughs> you know, that type of thing, instead of just throwing people into the position, that's probably not a good fit. And the executor also see, hey, do I really want to, um, do I really want to do this job? It's, uh, there's, there's no reason why you can't just say, no, I don't want to do this, because your eye, you're going to go in with your eyes wide open. Do you have the time to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to take this on? Do you want the nonsense that you're going to have to put up with? with yes, because there's probably going to be drama. But if you get the book, you can kind of avoid some of it. So, well, well yeah, in the book, it tells you how to deal with those nonsense <laughs> exactly. people. So, anyway. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. Um, like you said, we'll have it all in the show notes. So definitely check that out click on his link and go check out David because he's an awesome person. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. 
You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.